What we want is an international crackdown on everybody who's pushing drug trafficking across borders. This means a crackdown on George Soros, who is the world's biggest drug trafficker. Shut him down and shut and think about shutting down anybody in the United States politically who's associated with George Soros. As a current agent of the British Foreign Office, George Soros is well known for being the key spokesman and financier of efforts to legalize the consumption and production of mind-destroying narcotics in the United States and internationally. It takes no effort to dig up the extensive coverage of the tens of millions of dollars he has personally spent over the years to finance decriminalization and harm reduction legislation in the United States as well as to create an array of front groups and organizations to promote his policy of menticide. Though this alone makes George Soros a complete menace to civilized society, what is not as well understood is that this so-called legalization drive by Soros is not in any way in opposition to or even different than the terrorist, organized crime, and gang-integrated international underground narcotics trade. The fact of the matter is, this is a single coordinated operation run by the British Empire. George Soros's full representation of Britain's Dope Incorporated is well illustrated by taking a quick look at some of his operations in the 1990s. It was early in the 1990s that the Bill Clinton administration was engaged in an attempt to crack down on the drug flows into the United States. The biggest front for the battle against cocaine trafficking was Colombia. This has been the home of the worst narco-terrorist cartels of the region. The drug wars of the Medellin, Cali, and FARC drug cartels have led to the capture, torture, and killing of many, many people, including local police, federal-level officials, and even presidents and presidential candidates. This utter bestialization of the population and the threat to the very existence of a sovereign nation of Colombia gives us a glimpse into the type of dark age conditions currently facing the world at this point of economic breakdown crisis. Patriotic factions in Colombia were giving their lives battling for their nation's future and the United States was attempting to provide crucial support to defeat these murderous drug cartels. This was the situation into which George Soros intervened to back up the Cali drug cartel and other elements of the narco-terrorist. A key ally of George Soros in these operations in Colombia was the Galinsky family based in Cali, Colombia. In 1994, the Galinsky family purchased the majority of the recently privatized Banco de Colombia, which was the second largest bank in Colombia at the time. But this was not just any bank. In a public broadcasting systems interview from October 2, 2000, a former mafia member turned informant for the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency who had helped to put a number of Colombian Mafia figures behind bars, spoke about the role of the Banco de Colombia. The Colombian banking industry that had subsidiaries in Miami and Panama worked very closely with us. We had Colombian banks, Banco de Colombia, Banco, uh, Banco Cafetero, Eagle National Bank of Miami. In those days, Eagle National Bank was a powerful aid for us between 1980 and 1984. But the cartel did not own the bank. It was simply allied with the cartel. The cartel didn't own the bank in front of FDIC, but we owned the bank. It was these banks which were crucial for the large money laundering operations needed to facilitate the illegal narcotics trade. For example, the Eagle National Holding Company of Miami was officially issued a cease and desist order from the United States Federal Reserve in 2005 intended to shut down its suspected money laundering operations on behalf of its largest owners, the Galinskys. In 1994, shortly after the Galinskys purchased the Banco de Colombia, they sold one-tenth of the bank to their ally, George Soros. Around the exact same time, a scandal was erupting around the presidential election campaign of Ernesto Samper Pisano. Through release of audio tapes famously known as the Narco Cassettes, it was exposed that the Cali drug cartel had made billions of dollars available for the presidential campaign of Samper. But instead of any investigation into a murderous drug cartel's attempts to buy off a presidential candidate, the case was dismissed by another source operative in Colombia, 
the then chief prosecutor for Colombia, Gustavo de Grief. Gustavo de Grief had previously represented George Soros' Drug Policy Foundation on a tour of the United States of America denouncing drug law enforcement. And after spending years in exile in Mexico, Gustavo, who is the Galinsky family's attorney, is now the chief spokesman for the Soros Galinsky Alliance. This case of organized crime and narco-terrorism destroying entire populations is a small slice of what George Soros represents and what he is bringing into the United States and the globe on behalf of his London masters. The drug traffic is our major enemy because it's the major power of the British to control policy throughout the world today. You break that and you've got control of the planet, back with the people. Because the money power now is coming from the speculation associated with the drug traffic. That's the center of these resources. The gambling in instant shut down derivatives trading, closed down the derivatives market, and closed down the drug traffic, and you've solved the big, biggest part of the problem, or you've made it soluble. So we, therefore, with this, our problem is we need cooperation to shut down the drug traffic. We need cooperation to shut down other things. Therefore, cooperation among nations both negatively against these kinds of problems and positively for cooperation in long-term economic development, nation to nation and groups of nations and so forth, is what's necessary.